Hey there, how's it going everyone? This is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel where today we are doing something that I've been trying to do for at least a month now, but I've been lacking the necessary card and that is compare 1st gen GCN with 4th gen GCN because now with Polaris release, we get a chance to compare apples to apples and that is clock for clock what 4 years of progress and refinement add up to to AMD's GCN architecture. It is seldom that you can compare different architectures clock for clock as more than often there are other factors that can come in the way of this. For GPUs the number of stream processors slash CUDA cores in case of Nvidia are not the only things sometimes differentiating architectures. There's also TMUs, texture memory units and ROPs, render output units. In this particular case, however, we are talking about the same architecture but one that has been refined and has hit its fourth iteration with the Polaris chip release. A few months ago, I did something similar to what I'm about to do here but back then it was with Nvidia's Maxwell and the newly released Pascal. But in that case, not even the CUDA core number was identical as opposed to this particular situation. The Radeon 280X versus the Radeon RX 470 or GCN 1st gen versus GCN 4th gen. I really wanted to do this test for some time but couldn't manage to get my hands on both the RX 470 as well as the 280X but finally did a few days ago. Since these two GPUs have the same number of stream processors, TMUs and ROPs, the clock for clock comparison becomes extremely relevant. For this comparison, I downclocked the Polaris chip inside the RX 470 to 1150 MHz and set the memory clock to 7000 gigabits per second for no bottlenecks. I also managed to overclock the 280X to 1150 MHz on the GPU and again 7000 gigabits per second for the memory clock. The Radeon 280X/7970 was released way back in 2012, so between it and the Polaris GCN, there's no less than four years of setting them apart. The 7970 and its reincarnation, the 280X, were and continue to be absolutely excellent cards. I was truly, truly amazed at the level of performance I was able to squeeze out of it in modern games. So if everyone is eager to see what 4 years of progress adds up to, then let's roll the tape. Alright, so here's BF1 averaging only 14% more frames on the RX 470 than it does on the 280X. The minimum frame rate gets a lower 11% bump from switching to the latest GCN iteration. This is exactly what I was talking about with the 280X and it's still being a great performer for 1080p. I mean look at these results, they're excellent for essentially a 4 year old card. And it's straight to Doom and it's Vulkan implementation where both cards get a speed bump from switching from OpenGL to Vulkan. But the RX 470 distances itself from the 280X more than it did in BF1. Minimums also get a hefty bump. Leaving deltas aside, again this is a 4 year old card pulling 103 average frame rate in a 2016 title so that's just awesome. Deus Ex Mankind Divided also sees a 22%-ish increase in performance. This is done with the in-game benchmark, hence those weird, extremely low minimums being reported, so never mind those. And again, another surprise from the first gen GCN here in Gears 4, as we only see a 10% increase which is definitely on the low side compared to what we saw earlier. I have to say, if it was not enough with my previous statements, that I am truly impressed with this 4 year old card. Mafia 3 may not be the brightest example to test in since it still has a lot of problems even after some of them have been addressed in patches but it doesn't seem to scale better with Polaris and 0% difference between the cards here. This is most probably the game's fault since every other game I've tested showed at least a 10% increase in performance for Polaris. But it is what it is and these are the results. And again it's the now classic GTA 5 which, like Gears 4, is on the low side for Polaris. It's only 13% faster than its aging brother, but you get what you get. But on the other hand, Witcher 3 sees a nice bump with Polaris, actually all Gameworks titles seem to get good improvements with GCN 4 gen. This is most likely intended and aimed by AMD. I mean it makes sense spending time to tune your new chip to the market reality and that is an increased number of Gameworks titles being released recently in which AMD cards always performed worse than their Nvidia counterparts. And bam again, this being another Gameworks title, we see large improvements, I mean 29% is nothing to sneeze at considering the Gameworks circumstances. 
So we finished the benchmarks and I just wanna take another quick look at the percentage differences between these two GPU iterations. Results vary by quite a lot, no one can deny that there's a huge difference between 10% and 30%. Like I previously said, Gameworks enabled titles seem to have gotten a performance uplift with Polaris. The decision seems logical if indeed was planned by AMD and I suspect it was. How do you feel the numbers look? Do you think this is low, high, to be expected? Remember that we are talking about the same architecture, just different iterations of it. Also remember the clock scaling is much better for 4th gen GCN than 1st gen. So performance delta in real life is bigger considering RX 470's much better overclock capabilities. The 17.5% average across these 8 games seems like a very solid and decent optimization of an existing and established architecture. And I want to end this with a salute to the all 7970 and 280X for being such a value-filled product. Alright, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Now you have the necessary information and like I mentioned previously in the video, I really want to see your thoughts on this as well. Remember, this is the same architecture, but do you think that four years of progress and refinement, continuous progress and refinement, really add up to everyone's expectations on this already established GCN architecture of AMD's? I want to see your comments down below and thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time everybody, bye bye.